Good morning, church. Would you join us as we worship Jesus together this morning? We're heaven's born creation is brought in adoration. Treasures woven by his love. His careful hands they hold us safe within his promise. Calling end of destiny. You let me fall. 
separate Nothing can separate Even if I run away Your love never fails I know I still make mistakes You have new mercies for me every day your love never fails. You stay the same. You stay the same through the ages. Your love never changes. The baby pain in the night, but joy comes in the morning. And when the ocean. his name, begin to worship him with everything you have. Jesus. Can't 
go back to the beginning Can't control what tomorrow will bring But I know here in the middle Is the place where you promised to you come will you meet me here again so all I want is all you are will you meet me here again
Thank you, Jesus. We are fallen because of you. dying for us on the cross, for helping us worship your name this morning. Jesus, without you, we can do no good thing. Jesus, you alone are good, and thank you for your presence. In your name we pray, Lord. Amen. Good morning, church. Thanks so much for joining us today. Pastor Scott Noggle, our student ministries pastor, is bringing us week two of our Faithful series. If you missed last week's message, you can always watch a replay on our website, our social media pages, or you could give a listen on our GT Church podcast. And if this is your first time joining us, welcome. We are so glad you're here and we'd like to stay connected with you. So we want to keep you up to date on everything. And so everyone, please take a second and fill out the connect card on our app or by clicking the link below so that you don't miss any updates or special announcements. Church family, I don't have to tell you, you know that there is so much heartache and unrest in our world right now. And as followers of Jesus, we're all asking, what can I do? What part can I play to bring about sustainable change? And that makes me think of the book of Micah in chapter six that says, and what does the Lord require of you? to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. And friends, we can't do that alone. God never meant for us to do it alone. So we want you to stay connected with us throughout the week by engaging with us on social media at GT Church Online. That's a place where we can share prayer requests, we can pray for one another, and we can stay encouraged in the hope and good news of Jesus Christ. And for those of you with kids and students at home, our GT Kids and GT Student Ministries have some great resources for you. You can check out their pages on social media as well. And make sure to visit our website for some great tools to use all week long. This week, we received another Give Hope Project collection in order to meet the needs of local organizations who are making a huge difference in our community. I'm so proud that I get to be a part of this church a church who recognizes that church is not a building. It's followers of Jesus joining together, sharing what we have to bring hope and help to a broken, hurting world. Thank you for giving and thank you for loving people. Thank you for answering the prayer of Jesus recorded in the book of John in chapter 17, when Jesus says, Father, make them one as we are one. Jesus prayed for unity. 
let us answer that prayer by praying for unity as well. Let's live as one. Let's live in love. So Father, we pray as we receive our offering right now, we pray that you will bless this offering, that you will bless the generosity of your followers. I pray that you multiply this offering, that it would go forth to bring hope and to bring healing, to make a difference in people's lives so that they can learn what it means to find and follow you and abide in you, deeply rooted in you. We love that we get to worship you in this way. So will you take what we have and will you use it to advance your kingdom? We ask all this in your strong and mighty name, Jesus. In our service today, we're celebrating and honoring our 2020 high school and college graduates. Graduates, while we realize that your graduation looked nothing like you thought it would, we want you to know that we see you, we celebrate you, and we are praying for you and always cheering you on. Congratulations, graduates. You've made it this far. But I want to challenge you with something. Graduation is not a finish line. Rather, it's a launching pad. It's a launching pad to launch you into what God has next for your life. And let me challenge you when you step into what your next is. In that process, it's not enough to figure out what you want to do. You also have to figure out your why. Why are you going to do what you're going to do? Because if you can determine the why behind the what, you'll change the world and be unlike anyone around you. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 says, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask, think, or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. And my prayer for you is that you would realize that God has huge dreams for your life. And as you step into them, realize the why behind what you're doing. God bless you. Now go and change the world. Hey, 2020 graduates of GT Church. Man, I just wanna say congratulations to you. We're so happy for your graduation uh, and thrilled. And I do wanna say this, I know it's been a hard time. Uh, when I think back, you know, months ago when we were going through the whole pandemic, it changed all of our lives, but certainly changed yours. And we want you to know, man, we're praying for you and encouraging you. I, I said on that March 15th date, I said this, but I gave a quote, from Corey Ten Boom, that never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. So we want you to know we love you, your family loves you, your church obviously, but God loves you. No matter what he's called you to do in your next step, we just want you to know, man, you're gonna be blessed and you're gonna be covered with our prayers. So God bless you guys and have a great day. So excited for you and for whatever uh, God has next for you in the next season of life. Uh, this is Pastor Scott Kramer here. I got a, a word for you today. Just one thing, you know, there's a lot of things you'll hear over the next uh, couple of weeks and months as you begin the journey um, into the next season. Uh, this is the one thing I would say. Again, a lot of great things that we said. This is the one thing that I would say. Um, and it's Proverbs 13, 20. It says this, He who walks with the wise grows wise but the companion of fools suffers harm. And the one thing that I would say to you as a uh, now a recent high school graduate uh, looking into the next season of your life is the friends that you choose will have an enormous impact on the rest of your life. In this next season, whether it's college or starting a, a new job, um, whatever it is, uh, the Bible says that the friends that you decide to align yourself with will have a very deep impact on your life. Again, Proverbs 13, 20. He who walks with the wise grows wise. If you align yourself with others who share your values, your Christian ethic, and who make wise choices, the Bible says you will be wise. On the other hand, the Bible says that a companion of fools suffers harm. And I can tell you that in my life, most of the bad decisions I made were because I was following peer pressure. And so I want to encourage you today, as you look into the next season, man, make wise choices about the friends that you choose to spend time with, because he 
He who walks with the wise grows wise, but the companion of fools suffers harm. God bless you. Uh, love you guys and have an awesome, awesome day. Congratulations, graduates. I hope you are finding ways to celebrate this incredible milestone in your life. One of many, many more, I'm sure. As I was thinking about you today and what I would say to you, Ephesians 2.10 came to mind. For you are God's handiwork, his craftsmanship, his masterpiece, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for you to do. And I know that the task of determining which good works God has prepared for you to do may seem daunting at times, but I want to encourage you that part of discovering the good works that God has prepared for you to do is to lean into and discover who God has uniquely created you to be. Because who you are determines what you do and how you do it. Someone once told me that calling our purpose is an evolution. And that means that when you are faithful with what God puts in your hands right now, he will be faithful to show you the next thing. And he will open the doors and opportunities for you to step into the good works that he has prepared for you to do. And I want you to always remember what Micah 6, 8 says. What does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. And when you do those things, friends, you can't go wrong. I'm praying for you and cheering you on. Hey graduates, this is Pastor Eric here. I just wanna give you a huge shout out and congratulations for making it and graduating in this crazy 2020 year. Um, I wanna just uh, send you out with a, a prayer that is just close to my heart and a quick scripture to just encourage you in this next season of your life, life, this next stage of your life. So the verse comes from Psalm 119 and it says, how can a man keep his ways pure? You know what? Just insert your name. How can you keep your ways pure? And here's what the word says. I love this. By guarding it, how can, a, how can someone keep his ways pure? By guarding it according to your word with my whole heart. This is it. So it's so important. With my whole heart, I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. I have stored up your word in my heart. So I'm gonna pray for each one of you that you will store the Lord's word in your heart as you continue your walk of faith in this new exciting season of your life. So God, I pray right now for every graduate, Lord. God, I thank you that they've made it through this year, Lord, a very trying year, but they, they made it and God, we thank you for that. And God, I pray that each one of them will store up in their heart your word, God, that you may lead, guide, and direct their paths, Lord, wherever it may take them, Lord God. I pray that your word will always be solid, stored, and completely fill their hearts so they can make wise, good decisions, Lord God, for that plan that you have marked out for every single one of them. So God bless them and may your favor be upon them. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys, congrats again. Wow, what an amazing time. Graduates, let me be a yet another voice that has said congratulations to you. Whether you've graduated from high school or from college and you're joining us today, I wanna say on behalf of the entire GT staff and entire GT church, we are proud of you, congratulations. Students, if you're watching today on YouTube, welcome. I'm glad you're with us today and joining in and this a little bit different for our student ministries this week. And wherever you are watching this from, whether it's from your couch or from the, the dining room table on an iPad or you're outside enjoying the weather on this beautiful day or you're driving in your car on your way to vacation, wherever it is, thank you for joining us today because I believe God has something special for us today. Graduates, I just want to encourage you with something. 
that graduation is not a finish line, but it's a launching pad. It's a, it's a beginning of what is next for you. And as we say that, I want to acknowledge that maybe there may have been graduates at GT Church that we may have missed. And so if you're watching this and you've graduated either from high school or from college, let me just say congratulations. We are proud of you. We are really sorry if we missed you. We did everything we can to make sure we had all of our graduates in. But we love you and we believe that God has incredible plans in store for your next step as he does for all of us. And maybe as a grad watching this this weekend or whenever you're actually catching this, maybe your future seems a little bit unclear. Maybe you're not sure if college is actually going to start in, in person in the fall or will it be online classes. Maybe you're struggling and asking yourself the question of what's my next step or what's God's will for my life in this next step. And the reality is for all of us, <laughs> there's a bunch of buzzwords we've been using lately, right? Words like these are unprecedented times and they are. This is going to cause us to pivot and it will. The term social distancing means a whole lot more to me now than it did three months ago. Uh, Zoom fatigue is a very real thing. Uh, being uncertain about your future seems to be hitting a little bit differently during this time. And whether you're a graduate watching this weekend or a parent who's had to entertain kids for the last 13 weeks and you're just praying. Your biggest prayer request right now is that they figure out how to open schools in the fall so your kids can get out of your house. Or maybe you're the worker who's unsure about what's next for your job, what it looks like six months from now. Or maybe you're the small business owner or big business owner and you're carrying the weight of your business on your shoulders and you're not sure what's next. I want to challenge you that while we're celebrating our graduates this weekend, this weekend's message is for you. Because I believe God has something to say to you. Last week, Pastor Brian opened our faithful series talking about the fact that there is a God who hears us and sees us in our story. In every part of our story, there's a God who sees and a God who hears. And I want to tell you today that that same God who has been faithful in every part of your story to see and hear is the same God that will be faithful to take you and carry you into whatever the next normal step is for you. In fact, I was listening to a worship song this past week, and quite frankly, I can't even remember which one it is, but the bottom line of it was this. It was, it was God, you've never failed me, and you won't start now. For the past several months, we've been talking about, I just can't wait to get back to normal. I mean, we've probably had those conversations every time we see people in person. I can't wait to get back to normal. I can't wait till we can get gathered back together as a church. And let me say, me too. Me too, but here's what I know. We're not going back to normal. We're stepping into our next normal because things are changing. But here's the thing. What's normal anyway? I mean, really, you don't act the same way you did 10 years ago. Your life doesn't look the same as it did 10 years ago. But here's the reality. You can change. You can adapt. You can learn. How do I know? Because we live in Pennsylvania. And if you live in Pennsylvania like I live in Pennsylvania, the reality is, is your life changes with the seasons. How do I know this? Because my life in June isn't the same as my life in January. You see, in June, I can go to Plum Creek and get ice cream. And in January, I can't go to Plum Creek and get ice cream and sit outside and eat it because it's warm outside. Because my life changes with the seasons. You can change. We're going to be stepping into our next normal, but here's the faithful part. God is for you and he is already there. In fact, do this right now for me. Whatever platform you're watching this on, put it in the chat. God is for me. Put it in the chat right now. God is for me. Put it in the chat. How do I know? Because Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. The same God who brought you to it will lead you through it. Last week, Pastor Brian said, we're going to be looking at the life of Abraham, and we're going to continue doing that this week. And so if you've got your Bibles, you can grab them out and turn to Romans chapter 4. We're going to jump around to a whole lot of verses today throughout the Bible, and they'll be popping up below me here. But Romans chapter 4, starting at verse 18, Paul is kind of giving a synopsis of Abraham's life, and this is what he says. 
against all hope, Abraham in hope believed, and so became the father of many nations. Hang on just a second. You know something, friends? We become what we believe. If you believe you're weak and you believe you can't do something, guess what? You will be weak and you won't be able to do it. We become what we believe. Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed. And so became the father of many nations, just as it had been said to him, so shall your offspring be. Verse 19, without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead since he was about a hundred years old and that Sarah's womb was also dead. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. Let me ask you something, friends. Do you believe that God has the power to do what he has promised? In fact, put that in the chat right now. If you believe God can do what he says he will do, put it down. Just put, I believe. I believe. Do you believe that God can do what he said that he will do? Verse 21, being fully persuaded that God had the power to do what he had promised. But here's the thing. When it comes to Abraham, when we read this passage, this, this synopsis of his life in Romans chapter 4, it, it seems like Abraham had a really, really easy time. That his journey was easy, that what he had to go through was easy. And I wonder if Abraham and Paul sat down on a Wisdom Wednesday for us and had a conversation over Zoom. And Paul said, Abraham, come on. Was it as easy as this made it seem? Was it as easy as this? I wonder if Paul would say no. No, it wasn't easy at all. Fact, 14 years ago, 2006, there was a movie that came out called The Pursuit of Happiness by Will Smith. It's based on a true story. And those of you who are graduating high school, yes, I know, that was before you started kindergarten. I get it. I get it. But in this, in this movie, Will Smith plays a character who is homeless and he's trying to get an internship, a paid internship, as, as, as an investment banker. And he has to, he's homeless, so some nights he sleeps in the bathroom in the subway station. And he has a child, and he has a son, and he has his son with him in the, in the subway station. And, and he just does everything he absolutely has to. He works his tail off in order to earn this internship. And at the end, the, the, the president of the company who awards him the internship, he stops him, he says, Was it as easy as you made it look? And on the edge of tears, Will Smith's character, his name's Chris, he says, no, sir. No, sir, it wasn't easy. So I wonder if we were talking to Abraham today and we say, hey, is it as easy as you made it look? I wonder if Abraham would say, no, sir. No, it's not as easy. You see, that's what happens in our lives too, though, isn't it? That we look at other people's success stories and we wonder why is it that that's not happening to us? Because all we see is their highlight reel and not the cutting room floor. Maybe we look at Snapchat or we look at Instagram or we look at, um, we look at Facebook and we look at these families that are, that are putting things together as a family. And we think to ourselves, my family is nothing like that. You know, you see the picture perfect. Uh, maybe you watch YouTube videos. Kind of one of my things lately is I've been watching YouTube camping videos. Like people that RV for a living probably because I'm stuck in my house. And I see these pretty families with a couple of little kids. And I think to myself, I'm not sure my family could be stuck in a box that was eight foot wide by 40 foot long forever. And I wonder, and I look at them and I think, why can't my family be like them? But here's the reality. I'm looking at their highlight reel and not their cutting room floor. Or maybe you're a guy watching this. And maybe you just tune me out because you say, I don't look at social media. I think that's dumb. But do you look down the block at the neighbor's driveway next to you and you see the newer cars in their driveway and when you ask yourself, why can't I have that? Or you, you see the, the house down the street that's got the camper parked next to it and you say, why can't I have that? And you don't see the reality. You don't see their their. their What's beyond, behind the scenes, all you see is their highlight reel. You, you look down the block. 
My neighbor next door a year ago got their driveway redone. And if they're watching, Justin, your driveway looks incredible. I love it. In fact, my driveway's being made to look like yours right now because I needed to widen my driveway. In fact, it's happening today while I'm recording this. But it's easy to look down the block and see, oh, wow, that's really nice. I wish I had them. And we don't know the full story because all we see is the highlight reel. And we compare ourselves to someone else's highlight reel without getting the full story. If you just read Paul's account of Abraham in Romans chapter 4, you might think Abraham's life was easy. But it was anything but. It was anything but. So, what Abraham had to do was God called him to do something huge. And Abraham had to have the faith to step out and trust that God was faithful to lead him through. Scott, what are you talking about? Well, let's talk about it for a minute. We talk about Abraham having the faith. First of all, what is faith? Well, the Bible describes it as this. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. It says, now faith is it confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. But here's the thing about faith, friends. Faith will require things of us. You, you see, faith isn't just some warm feeling that's meant to comfort us, although it does. Faith isn't that hot shower that you stand in. I would say warm bath, but I don't take baths because I think it's sitting in your own filth. But that's a whole other thing. If you like taking baths, you you, you go with that. And so it's not standing in a warm shower and thinking this is going to wash away all the, the the faith is just going to wash away all the struggles that I have. But it does. Faith isn't this get out of jail free card that we can whip out whenever we need it. No, no, no. Faith requires something of us. And it required something of Abraham. So let's go pick up to the beginning of Abraham's story. So, flipping your Bibles over to Genesis chapter 12, starting at verse 1. Now here's the thing. i got to let you know something about Abraham. When Abraham was born, he was not named Abraham. He was named Abram. And this is important, and we'll talk about it in a minute. But for now, just hang in there with me and realize that there's a guy we're talking about, and his name's Abram. So, But he's also Abraham. It's the same guy. He just added a ha later. Actually, God did, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, Genesis chapter 12, starting at verse 1, it says, The Lord said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, your father's household, to the land I will show you. Hang on a minute. How scary must that have been? That God shows up to him? This is the God that Abram had been serving, that Abram had been trusting And he hears God's voice and God says to him, I want you to walk away from everything that represents comfort to you. That also hits a little differently during this pandemic time too, doesn't it? Some of us, some of you, have had to walk away from everything that has felt comfortable to you because your job has changed. Because life has changed. Because your kids are always in your house. That has changed. Let's keep going back to eight, about what God said to Abram. In verse 2, he said, I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you, and I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you I will curse, and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. He's basically saying, Abram, I'm going to make your name great. Wow. So what happened? Verse 4. So Abram went, as the Lord told him, and Lot with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. Now, whenever we read that, I think 75 years old. Now, here's the crazy thing. He didn't actually have his son until he was 100 years old. And when I think that, when I think of walking away from everything you're comfortable with, This isn't like Abram buying an RV when he retires and goes and travels the nation to visit all of his kids. No, no. He didn't have any kids. God says, I want you to leave your country and everything that you're comfortable with and go to a land that I will show you. Wow. Talk about needing faith to step out. I think one of the most faithful verses in all the Bible is verse 4 where it says, So Abram went. Now, I did some quick math just so we can kind of compare it to our current reality that we're in right now or today's culture. Abraham lived to be 175 years old. 
The average lifespan in America is 78.5 years, 78 and a half years is the average lifespan in America today. So if you did the math on that, basically it would be, and, and kind of like in 2020 years, Abram was 33 years old. So it's not quite as old as we think. But if you're 33 years old and you're established and you have a family and you, you and Abram had a wife and, and he had a, 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 a bustling career at the time. He obviously had wealth because he was able to take stuff with him. And God says, I want you to leave everything you're comfortable with. Man, that takes faith. I've been meeting with student leaders throughout this pandemic, and one of the lessons we talked about a few weeks ago that I think is so pertinent to our country right now, and it's actually, I found it online, it's called the Leadership Test, and I kind of communicated this way to our students. I said, being a great leader means doing the right thing at the right time, in the right way, for the right reason. Who? Let me say that again, because I think if you're taking notes today, you better write that down. Being a great leader means doing the right thing at the right time, in the right way, for the right reason. Abram left because God said so. So what does faith require of us? I said earlier that faith isn't just about a warm feeling, but it actually requires something of us. Well, I think there's three things that faith requires of us that I want to share with you today. The first thing is that faith requires trusting God in what's next. Faith doesn't mean knowing the entire plan. But faith does mean saying, we can't stay here. Here's one thing I know. It's one of those, like, logical things in this life. Friends, you can't get to point B if you don't leave point A. And if you are so busy clinging to your past that you can't let go of, it doesn't matter where God calls you to, you'll never get there because you're not willing to let the past go in order for you to step into that which God has for you in the future. Faith requires trusting God in what's next. See, and along the way, so Abram steps out. Abram steps out and he begins following God. He trusts, right? Uh, chapter, verse four, you know, Abram, Abram left with everything he had. And while he's stepping out, he begins to get discouraged because God told him, I'm gonna make your name great and all the nations of the world will be blessed through you. And he looks around and he goes, but I don't even have a son of my own or a daughter for that matter. I mean, I got some livestock, some animals, but, but what does that mean for me? And so, a couple chapters later in Genesis chapter 15, God knew Abram kind of needed a little bit of a, pet, a pep talk. So he takes him outside. And this is what it says, Genesis 15, verse 1. It says, after this, the, Lord, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield and your great reward. You know, one of the things I think is interesting about God's word, friends, is that any time in God's word that God showed up and spoke to someone, most times the very first words out of God's mouth were, do not be afraid. Why? Because we obviously are afraid. We'll leave it there. That wasn't a really deep thought. That was just thought. Verse 2. But Abram said, Sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless? And the one who will inherit my estate is Eleazar of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no children, so a servant of my household will be my heir. Abram kind of has this honest conversation with God. Let me encourage you with something, folks. Friends, God's not afraid of your honest conversation. He's not. The God who created the universe is big enough to listen to your heart's cry and your heart's desire. But here's where faith comes in. Faith is trusting God in the process. Faith is saying, God, this is what I'm upset about, but I'm going to give it to you and let you handle it. Verse number four, then the word of the Lord came to him. This man will not be your heir, but a son who is your own flesh and blood will be your heir. He took him outside. He said, look up at the sky and count the stars if indeed you can. Now let's picture this for a minute, right? Abraham walks outside and he looks up. God says, count the stars. One, two, three, four. Depending on where you live, if you live inside the city, it might be, you, you can see less stars. I mean, if you kind of live out, 
where there's not as many city lights, you see more. But the reality is there are, we don't even know the number of stars in the sky because they are infinite. So he's looking up and he's counting and somewhere in the middle of counting, God says, if indeed you can count them, then he said to them, so shall your offspring be. He's saying, Abram, I know you don't have one, but you hang in there with me and sooner or later your offspring are going to be more numerous than the sands on the sea. That's another, he said that to him in another place. And then verse 6, Abraham believed the Lord and he credited to him for righteousness. Faith requires trusting God in the process. The second thing that faith requires is faith requires us taking the next step. Listen, friends, faith requires us to do something. Now, I saw this in a movie this week. It's a totally made up story, but it fits right now. So hang in there with me. There was this, there was this pastor of this church, this small town church, and there was a flood that was going to come through the, the town. And his family called him, the pastor's family called him and said, I need you to get out because the flood is coming. You need to evacuate. And the pastor said, no, no, God will save me. And then his neighbors came and he said, they said, pastor, you need to leave. God is coming. And the pastor said, no, no, God will save me. And then eventually the local authorities came, the fire, the local fire and police came and they said, sir, pastor, you have to leave. There's a flood coming. You will not survive. The pastor said, no, no, I'm staying because God will save me. And lastly, the Army National Guard came in and said, Pastor, you have to leave now. You will not survive. The flood is coming. And the pastor said, no, 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 no. I'm going to wait because God will save me. Well, the pastor drowned. And as he stood before God, he said, God, I prayed that you would save me. Why? Didn't you save me? And God said, what do you mean? Well, I sent your family, and I sent your neighbors, and I sent the authorities, the firemen, and I, and I sent the National Guard to save you. What were you waiting for? Friends, faith requires us to take the next step we can't stay where we are. We can't cling to our past and step into God's future. Let's go back again. I read it before. Genesis chapter 12, verse 4. One of the most faith-filled passages of the Bible. One of the most faithful. There it is on the, on the, on the series title. Faithful passages of the Bible. Genesis chapter 12, verse 4. So Abram left as the Lord had told him. So faith requires us to trust God in the process. And faith requires us to take the next step. And lastly, thirdly, faith requires us to hand off to the next generation. We have some students that, are, that run track. Two of our students who are graduating, who graduated from Wilson High School, Bryn and Reagan Underwood, twins, they are last year, because their track season got canceled this year, 2018, 2019, sorry, last year they ran in states in the 4x800 for Wilson High School. This is the baton they ran that meet in. Actually, this is from 2018. This is the states from the year before. And this year, particular year, they finished fifth in the state in the four by 800. Listen, that's a long way to run, friends. And to get four people willing to do it, no thanks for me. But these girls are awesome. But here's the thing. This year, I don't know about you, but I was looking forward to the Summer Olympics in 2020. I don't know what your house is like, but I love watching sports. And so when the Summer Olympics are on, or the Winter Olympics are on, man, for those like 10 days to two weeks, I am glued to my television set following how is, the, how is our nation doing? How is my favorite sports doing? And one of the things I'm really, really interested in because of the intricacies is track and field. And the, and the like four by relays, relay. so there's a four by one and a four by two and a four by four and a four by eight relay. And what's interesting about the relay is this, that there's something called the changeover box. 
that I think is important to us today, friends. And the changeover box is this. The changeover box is a 20 meter span. So if it's a four by 800, it's the last 10 meters of the first runner's 800 and the first 10 meters of the next runner's 800. And what happens is in that 20 meter span, the runner coming in has to hand the baton off to the next runner. The handoff has to cleanly happen within those 20 meters and you cannot leave if it, if it goes longer than the box, you get disqualified. If you drop the baton, you get disqualified. And so the changeover is the most important part of a relay. And it's incredibly interesting to me because what looks to be so seamless has taken hours and hours and hours and hours of practice. In fact, when Brynn and Reagan let me borrow this, they warned me that if this drops on the ground, you have to kiss it. Like, that's, the, that's their thing. So with our, you know, current reality being what they're being with what we're dealing with with the virus, I am not dropping this on the ground. I promise. If I do, this is a whole different sermon video this morning. But there's this changeover box that happens. That the first runner coming in has to hand the baton off to the next runner. And here's what's interesting, folks. That first runner doesn't keep running with the second runner. No, he runs alongside him until he makes the handoff in that 20 meter window. And then he stops. And he lets the next runner keep running. Friends, this is so critical for us and our faith. Faith requires us to hand off to the next generation Faith requires us to hand off to the next generation as a church. If we don't hand the reins of leadership off to the next generation, we will eventually die. So here's my question. This isn't about the church. This is about your life. Friends, who are you handing off leadership to? Who are you handing off your faith to? Because if you don't remember anything else I say today, remember this. Faith isn't faith if we keep it to ourselves. It requires us to hand off to the next generation, to hand off to whoever's coming next, to hand off to a friend, to hand off to a colleague, to hand off to our kids, to hand off to the next generation of leaders who are coming behind us to say, hey, here's the baton so you can run with it. Abram knew this. Yeah, let's go back to Abram real quick. Remember I said his name was Abram, eventually was changed to Abraham? Here's what's really interesting. You can read about it in Genesis chapter 17. Here's what's incredibly crazy. Abram, in, in Bible days, your name meant something and you were always given a name for a reason. Abram means exalted father. Abram means you're a really great guy. And that's a great name. I mean, if that's what you're known for, that you're an exalted father, man, that's incredible. That means you're a really great person. You're a superstar. Abraham means father of many. See how that hits a little differently, friends? Abram means you're a really great guy. And that's awesome. But Abraham means you're a father to many. You are handing it off. And watch this. If you flip Matthew chapter 1, the very first thing that happens in the New Testament it, it starts out with this. This is the genealogy of Jesus. And it says this. It says, Abram, Abraham was the father of. So he kept saying the father of. Abraham was the father of Isaac. Isaac was the father of Jacob. Jacob, the father of Judah and his brothers. And then it goes on and on and on. And eventually it says, Jesse was the father of King David. And it keeps going on and on and on and on to verse number 16 where it says, and Jacob. Now, this is a different Jacob than I just read. This was actually 28 generations after Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But verse 16 says, And Jacob was the father of Joseph, who was the husband of Mary. And Mary was the mother of Jesus, who was called the Messiah. Listen, friends. Faith isn't faith. If we don't give it away, faith requires us to hand off 
to the next generation, to hand off to that group of leaders and people behind us that are saying, we've got next. Faith isn't faith if we keep it to ourselves. So here's my challenge for you today. Friends, everyone who is watching this, who are you handing your faith off to? And let me encourage you with this. You don't have to have it all figured out. You don't have to have all the answers. You don't have to have the entire Bible memorized in order to share your faith with someone. Simply, you don't have to be perfect. In fact, be real. Be authentic. Be your true self. But invite somebody into your faith journey that not only is investing in you, but somebody that you're investing in. Somebody that you are saying, hey, here, let me hand the baton off to you. Graduates, I challenge you today. I know. You're just starting. Whether you're graduating college and stepping into a career, whether it's, your, whether it's your one and only for your entire career or not, I don't know, but you're stepping into something or you're a high school graduate and you're stepping into whatever it is that is next for you, I want to challenge you with this idea to figure out who are you going to hand your leadership and your faith off to. Who is the next generation coming behind you? You don't have to wait until you're in your 40s to figure that out. You don't have to wait until you're an expert to figure that out. You can do it and you can start doing it right now, right in your house, right now. Parents with toddlers, if you have them watching GT Kids stuff, you're already figuring out how to hand off your faith in an age-appropriate way. Parents of teenagers who are encouraging students to watch GTSM on YouTube on the weekend, students who are watching this, you're already investing in your faith. Now, whose faith are you going to invest in? Because faith isn't faith if we keep it to ourselves. So who are you going to hand the baton off to? Let's pray. Jesus, I thank you that you are the same God yesterday, today, and forever, that you will be there with us every step of the way. I pray, God, in the name of your son, Jesus, that you would challenge us to find the next generation to hand our faith off to. God, we love you. I pray you would bless graduates that are graduating this year. Would you guide their steps? I pray for each and every person watching this video right now, whenever it is, would you guide them into their next step? In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thanks for joining us today. I hope you feel inspired and motivated to keep leaning into God's faithfulness in your life. Our mission here at GT Church is to reach people and grow together in Christ. So if you enjoyed today's message, you can partner with us in that mission by sharing it with your friends and your family. A replay of today's message can be found on our website, our Facebook page, and on our YouTube channel. And if you have friends and family who prefer to listen to church services, you can share our GT Church podcast with them. Make sure you stay connected all week long on social media by following us at GT Church Online. You can also check out our website throughout the week for some great resources, especially for those of you with kids and students at home. I hope you have a great week and don't forget to join us this Wednesday night at seven o'clock on Facebook and YouTube for even more discussion about God's faithfulness. I'll see you there.